Zanfar's army of the Nile had advanced under cover of night and lay unseen for one burning day in the desert before the onslaught upon Sidi Barani. Then began the first stage of the victorious offensive. Infantry and mechanized units attacked while the Royal Air Force bombed aerodromes and shot the Italians out of the sky. The advance was a triple thrust at Safafi, Nibewa and Maktila. The advance once started swept on irresistibly with ever increasing momentum. Next objective was the Tamar Forts. Now the Navy took a hand, bombarding Sidi Barani. Another lightning thrust from Safafi to cut off the Italian retreat to Bukbuk and Saloum. From Maktila and Nebewa and the Tamar Forts, the army of the Nile swooped on Sidi Barani itself. The result was British victory, and you may have heard that we took some prisoners. on British News cameraman in the western desert took these amazing pictures. His car driver had been killed by a bomb. He took the irony of the Italian memorial to victory on the road of so-called victory, with wretched Italian prisoners passing back into the land they had hoped to conquer. In the words of Winston Churchill, Our armies are tearing and will tear your African empire to shreds and tatters. And so the backward march goes on. <music> Lorries captured from Italy were used to take Italian prisoners back to the British base. These are some of the ruins of Sidi Barani after the naval bombardment. The desert is littered with war material valued at millions. That day a furious sandstorm lashed the troops in action. Subsequent operations were carried out in the face of enormous difficulties, but the advance never wavered. And as far as the eye of the camera could penetrate were signs of a great defeat for Italy. was journey's end for many a black shirt. <laughs> Commanding operations in the western desert was Major General R.D. O'Connor on the right. And still his prisoners troop in by hundreds and thousands. <laughs> 